Yeah, so back in the days, I recognized the importance of being in the, in the music industry and knowing that doing music was only 10% of what the game was about. And I remember hearing Remy Ma say it in an interview. She was like, 10% of it is only hip hop and that's it. The rest of it is interviews and touring and not sleeping. And I was like, what is she talking about? Until I really kind of understood what was going on. The key to that is going outside. Um, and I had to go out to different events. You know, during this time, like I was like homeless basically. And I was staying from couch to couch. So my records would be on every website. My music video was like number four, number three on MTV. I'm on BET and I have no money in my pocket. I'm like broke asking for people to swipe me on the train. And I just kept working. I kept going to different events and I, I happened to meet um, Rich Nice, who was like, Mickey, you need to do this Honda commercial audition. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, cool. So I went and I did the Honda commercial audition and I was the spokesman for Honda for two years in a row. And then Puma reached out to me and Puma was like, hey, we want you to do some modeling for us, Puma, and we'll endorse you. So I started working with Puma. I wanted to get a Supra deal, but they didn't want to come up off any money. And, you know, we was very beneficial to Supra in the beginning years. So people still come up to me to this day like, yo, you influenced us to do Puma. Uniglo, like I never thought that I would have a Uniglo deal. Like I had a Uniglo deal three years ago, you know what I'm saying? Right after I had 414 in the bank account, you know what I'm saying? They came up to me and was like, yo, we want you to be an artist ambassador for our brand. So I was like, okay, cool, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So I did that. Uh, EA Sports. I've done so many songs with EA Sports. They're such a great company. And I was very blessed to, to work with them. Red Bull reached out to me to do some things with them, as well as Sprite. The last real brand ambassador kind of thing I've been doing has been Y3. And Y3 doesn't endorse a lot of people. And they kind of still don't endorse me. They just give me a very, very handsome discount on things because I just wear it all the time. So it's like, people always just think it's my company. And it's like, nah, I, I just love Y3, you know what I'm saying? So I've always thought that integrating fashion, technology, and gaming was always a part of hip hop, period. Even art. So I've worked with the MoMA, I've worked with the Brooklyn Museum in doing things because of the Mickey Mouse project. So I've all, I felt all of these things encompass what hip hop was and integrating these things you bring for uh, uh, art fans, video gamers, fashionistas, and techies. And they're all fans of my work because I'm a fan of what they do and what they are engaged in. So it was, it was definitely imperative that I worked with these people. And whenever I got a contact, I would just hit them immediately, like the very next day. Hey, how can we work together? It's not even about the money. It's about the reach sometimes. And I wanted to give the, give the appearance that I was like this guy who was all over the place and had all this money. When in all reality, we were just hand in hand working with each other. I remember doing something with Rocksmith I was one of the leading guys in Rocksmith, and I had, I had a billboard of myself in Russia at a streetwear store. I still have the picture. I'm like, why? Like, this is crazy. A coup with T.I. T.I. reached out to me directly. And I had billboards of me in malls in the South. And it was just like, what is going? Like, so for me, I always felt like working with different brands was essential because they already have the built-in fan base. I have a built-in fan base. Us collaborating together was always going to be essential for the growth of my brand.